Right, so let me start by explaining the concept, Lou. So um, I've got a, I've got a sample with each each of the um, the sets to show you. So this is what it looks like with the little um, the blue tits. Um, it's an A5 stamp set, so you're going to get A6 cards, which is really nice because sometimes you don't want to send a huge card. Um, you're thinking of postage, also time. And, um, and I know that, um, you know, uh, across the pond, a lot of people like to send a smaller size card. So this is perfect because it's a two part process. They go together. Let me show you how that works. So this is your main focal image. This here is the, the Midas touch. That's the gilded area. This is think of embossing powder when you see this. Think of all those fabulous, glittery, multicolored, all special effects embossing powders that wouldn't look right if you stamped the little birds and the realistic element in those, but it looks as amazing if it's in the background. The inspiration was, you know, like when you see fabric with like silk, gold silk running through it, that was the inspiration for this Midas Touch. And this is about the third Midas Touch range now, and you've loved every one, and everyone's been a sellout range. So, but this is the first Christmas Midas Touch. So from that stamp, you can see, we've now got the little blue tits colored in, in detail and realism as you want them to be. This has been used, and um, this is used, looks like um, a watercolor pencil. This is one of Debbie's cards. But in the background, look, we've got the lovely shiny. I wanted it to look abstract, but kind of suggest either twigs or cracked ice. Looks, again, it's more of an abstract background, but um, a suggestion of whatever you want it to be. But giving that really pretty gilded background to it, as if it's a, a fabric that you would buy. The good thing is, as well as they work brilliantly with the backing papers, which are available, and the other Christmas um, elements that were, were that sold out and hopefully are back in stock um, to add the accent. So that's the little blue tits. Let me show you the next one in detail. Then we have the Christmas rose, which is a, just a traditional. I love a hellebore of Christmas rose. So the big, big um, floral element here with all the wonderful word in here, wonderful winter wishes, winter's beauty. And, and so not just for Christmas, for whatever you celebrate in that season, but this one, this, the backgrounds are all swirly and very, very um, opulent and and really um, lots of flourishes. But in the center, these are also gonna be gilded. Let me show you. So on this card, let me show you how it all comes together. You've got that there. Now you see, now that's on craft card. Now craft card's pretty quite, you know, it's not, it doesn't show up embossing brilliantly, but you can see how you've got those flourishes showing up on the background, really pretty. But look at the center of those flowers. So this was what I was talking about, spot gilding, spot flourishing, embossing powder where you want it to be. Oh, and by the way, the frames here, notice all of the frames. This is all, these are all the frames that are available in this uh, collection as well. So if you get the bundle, you'll get the frames and then everything in there and that's the Christmas rose. Stamped and embossed to make the backing paper. This time, fabulous. Then we have the Majestic Stag. So this time, you know, these are my samples, so a little bit wibbly wobbly in the packaging, so you'll have to forgive that. And you can see they've been used. So we've got the um, this gorgeous uh, Frosty day, Days, Warm um, Heart, and Beautiful Winter Memories, and Enjoy the Majesty of the Season. So he's, a, you know, a stag at Christmas. It's just traditional. Snowflakes this time. Check him out. At that so and the thing is with this face on the stag you can alter it you can make him look um you can change the coloring on it and it's amazing how much i've actually done a red nose one i've done a rudolph version which i'm going to show you so use the elements from the other christmas collection that the um heartfelt christmas um create your own backing papers or use the backing papers but look you've got all those lovely snowflakes which would create a resist so you to ink over the top but you've got that um, fabulous element where he's showing through the snowflakes. The snowflakes aren't obliterating his majesty. Ponsettiers, you've got to have a Ponsettier Christmas. And this one for me is really total retro, Rat Pack, 50s, 60s Christmas kitchen. It looks like the, the card that I would have had, you know, been sent when I was like, you know, a young one. Um, and you've got the big, gorgeous, flourishy poncetia. So if you if you wanted to cut out, these will be fantastic for decoupage and make a garland with them. Easy, I can even cut that out. You know, that's not beyond me. But this element here, this is where you're going to use this for the gilding, and this is going to give you that fabulous 50s, 60s kind of um, cool kitsch kind of like beaded curtain look. I love that. But notice the centre of the poncetia is gilded as well. 
So if you look at this, so on this one, there's bits of copper color that's been used with little dots of stickles on it to bring it even more bling. The frames, again, absolutely stunning, really showing them off, perfectly sized for that. You can layer those up, backing papers here from the, the, the pad from the Hartfeld um, Christmas, which are all uh, available still. And you can see the edge on the berries in the center of that. So that's where the, it comes together perfectly. The other good news is they work fabulously with your Hartfeld Christmas. So if you want to make these bigger, so you can keep them small and conservative and, and um, use the frames that are in this collection, or you can mix and match and power them up with the previous collection, which I think is fantastic because that means that you've got more power to your elbow and you can just um, more play in, more options, more combinations that you're not gonna run out of. They're the dies to show you, but I'm sure Lou uh, will have or will show you them in more detail so that we can carry on and play. And of course, if you're wondering what that paper pad is like that we've been using, this is the paper pad that features in a few of the samples. Right, so that being said, let me show you how these work. I'm gonna start with some card and my stamping platform. So the first thing is to, um, to start with them and I'm going to start with the little birds which I'm looking for now with my pile um, I think they were about the first ones to come out bear with please talk amongst yourselves I have them here right so first thing to do is to stamp the image the focal point image so I'm going to take these out and get the little birds ready get my stamping platform now I've cut some card larger than I intend it to be um, because I want to trim it around. I'll show you, it'll become apparent why shortly. So I'm going to position these in here like this. Um, and my platform, love this platform by the way, absolutely fab. And I'm going to pop the birds like this. Now, I've got the bigger area around the card because when I come to put the overlay on with the background, it might. It's not necessarily going to be straight on the card. It might be a little bit like this and I might have to trim it, which will, that larger card size allows for that. It'll be clear in a minute. So first thing to do is to stamp this. Now I want this to be stamped in a paler ink. So I'm using Memento. Now this is important. Note, um, I would prefer to use a water-based permanent ink for this. I used Versafine clay and I love Versafine clay. But the only thing is with that, it's oil based and it dries really slowly. And in fact, a lot of you might know you can actually emboss with Versafine clay. So you can pop clear embossing powder on top of those colours and it, it works great as a, um, a like a coloured embossing powder. The problem being though, when I come to do the embossing background bit, it, the ink line that if you've just stamped it will also grab the embossing powder. So I don't want it to, whereas the Memento the water-based um, dye basting. Have a look on on um, on the site and web on the website. There'll be lots to choose from, which will be suitable for that. Um, they don't. The embossing powder won't cling to that line. So I've double stamped it so that it's nice and um, crisp and sharp. Because obviously the beauty of your stamp position, we love them. Thank you very much. And I'm going to take that, pop that back on my little sheet here, and now. I'm going to take this background ready to use. But before I do anything, I'm going to just quickly dry this to make sure that this ink is dry. And I'm going to give it a quick blast. So Right, it shouldn't take any more than that because it is a um, it is a fast drying water based ink. But I'm also now going to use my anti static bag. So go over the background because we're going to emboss. Okay, so use the anti static bag like this over the background, over the birds, and position back in my um, with my magnets. Get it anchored down there, and now the background. This is where we are going to. Position these little birds in amongst those little twiggy bits. Now, if you, this is where you do a little bit of left a bit and right a bit and down a bit and across a bit. And what you'll find is I've drawn the little twiggy bits so that they don't overlap onto the birds. If you just get that little bit of a wiggle and get them positioned where you want them to be. Now, you can see that magnet's going to be in the way, so I'm going to move that 
there so that it doesn't interfere with my stamp. But can you see what I mean about it being a little bit on the wonk? You won't, you'd think you've stamped it straight, not always, that doesn't always happen. Oh, got another problem with the magnet there. So that's where I wanted to be. What I would do if I was batch making these, I'd stamp all your birds first. Then I would do this background bit on all of them. So batch make, stamp all the main images, then do the um, embossing bit. So next bit is I'm going to use my Versamark and I'm going to ink this up really well. Now these are really fine thread-like little veins, little twiggy bits, little, um, let's say, cracked ice twigs, whatever you want them to be. I'm going to actually use gold this time. On the sample that we've been, um, I'm going to, we're going to develop, I've, I've actually got one already prepared and I've used silver. But let's have a look and see what gold, what the gold's like. Absolutely mix and match them. Don't think that, you know, it, it's, oh, well, it's going to be this colour, so I'll stick to that and play it safe. Don't. Experiment. Mix, mix them up. Get all those fabulous, fun embossing powders you've got in your stash out. This is the perfect time to use them because they're in the background as, as the way they should be. They're not going to, you're not going to get psychedelic birds if you use all these colours, whereas normally you would because you think, well, how can I colour that in? Stamp that with a, you know, a, 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 a multicoloured special effects embossing powder when I want to colour it in so it looks a natural thing. You can't, but in this case, you can because it's exactly where you want it to be in the background, giving it that gilded look, the Midas touch. So, but of course, it doesn't have to be gold. So, that's that there. I've got that's fine. Now, I'm going to take that out of my um, little folder there, pop it to one side, and I'm going to get my bit of dodgy orange card here, which I, uh, that's my, going to collect my embossing powder. And I'm going to use um, Golden Glow. And this is this is the set that I got. It's a, a Sarah Newman set of, um, I think it was three different embossing powders. Really pretty. It's a lovely gold, this one. So check that out if you want to have a look on the website for that. And I'm going to just pop that on the background. Now, this is where you want to have, you'll see if you haven't used um, your anti-static pad um, as you should have done, you'll get little bits here and there if you look close you just now's the time to to clean it up is what I what I should be saying so to do that just get a dry brush and just tidy up any little bits that you think oh I don't like that that will give it a little tap and those little rogue bits should disappear have a look if there's any what it'll what it is it's clinging to fingerprints and things on the cord so if you've handled your cord and um you'll know that it's like forensics it's like you know uh, DCI Viera Stanup would be interested in that because she's just got your printer no bother so can you see how we've got the twiggy bits now right pop that in the jar thank you very much like that and then by the way if you've got these wear embossing powders wear embossing powders are in anti-static jars you technically don't need an anti-static bag if you keep them in these jars Every time you decant them onto something that isn't the jar or in another bigger plastic container, though, they lose their anti-static qualities. Just seeing. Not a lot of people know that. So, heat your heat gun up, let it get to heat, and then we'll move across like that. So give it a, a few seconds just to get up to heat, and then it's less chance of warping your card. And then, start at one side, look across, and as soon as it's melted, move on. So the other thing is, is that I'm hoping you can hear me. This is a really good embossing tool because it's got two speeds. So if you want to use like an ultra thick and not have it go everywhere you don't want it to go, you can use the slower speed. But for this kind of precise, get it done, I'm using the faster speed. Almost sorted, almost there. Thank you very much, job a good one. Now, I'm going to move this for you to look in a sec, but right now, I need to be looking across it. Me ever silent camera woman, Maria. Say hello, Maria. Hello, Maria. She's doing her best to tell me to give it a wiggle for you, right? But right now, it's a bit difficult because I need to look and see that I've melted it. The only way I can see that is to look across it, okay? So, she's got your interested heart, bless her. But the reason I couldn't wiggle and let you see that... A flash there, look, ooh, pretty, was because I needed to look across it. Don't look straight down on it when you're embossing it, look across it, and you'll see where it goes from dull to blingy. Really lovely. So you're not actually getting that lovely gold. You can't see, the, well, you can a little bit flash there. 
Right, moving on. Okay, moving on, I have advanced. I have, so here's a one I did earlier and I used a, a silver back in blingy, um, a glittery silver one. What did I use here? This was a wow one and it was a metallic sil silver sparkle. So if you want it a little bit bolder, a little bit more blingy, metallic silver sparkle. So next thing to do is to use your dies to cut the shape out that you want. Now what I did was I actually, um, I cut into, I got the, the die over my image. So the die, I put it over and I knew that these little holly bits were gonna stick outside the circumference of the die. So I did that trick, you know, where you cut into the holly and then you over, you put it over your die when you cut it out in the machine. So then you've got these little bits that are sticking out which are gonna be proud of the frame, like this. Now I'm sure we'll have time to show you all this. There's just so much to show you in the colouring in and all the other aspects that we'll do this another time. Just so that we don't have to get the die cutting machine out and put it back and, and all of that. So that's what I did to create that shape there. So now we're going to colour this in. So we'll have the little birds there and I'm going to keep my frame there. I'm hoping I don't lose everything because I've got a couple I want to um, share with you to colour in together. And I'm going to take, well, I'm going to use my reference um, picture just at hand so I can remember what colours. Um, if you're not sure what blue tits look like or what the birds look like, or if you want to be authentic with the hellebore, with the Christmas rolls and think, I think I know what it's like, I'm, but I'm, uh, I don't know. Which, look at pictures. Look at the pictures. Often you... You kind of get it wrong. I do. I get it wrong all the time. And I think I know. And then I realise, oh, I'm not too sure. So what I'm using now is I'm using a watercolour pencil. Now I'm using the um, the Faber Castell Al Albrecht Dura watercolour pencils. And these are the professional quality ones. And the reason I am always, you know, um, championing professional co quality um, colouring products is because you do really get what you pay for with with the with coloring products they are usually more highly pigmented less filler in them and the big thing for professional artists is that they don't fade they don't lose their color like um the student grade do now that isn't as important to be honest with cards because you know cards are disposable if this was going to go on a wall it would be much more um you know of importance but it's probably just going to be out for that Christmas thank you very much do its thing and then that's it maybe that's it it's had its day which is kind of sad but that's the reality of it so don't worry the um the any of the Faber Castell range are great so if your budget can just go to the the student quality you're still onto a winner it's all good don't worry about it so I've got some um Right, I've got the yellow. I've used two yellows there. I've used, if you're wondering what they are, I've used um, cadmium yellow and I've used um, dark cad yellow. So that's it, two different cadmium yellows. And I'm going to use a little bit of um, dark indigo now. So I'm going to use the dark indigo around this little, um, this little hairline here. So dark indigo, really dark blue colour. Um, I did this and I did a little run through for you and I tried this out and I thought, oh great. And I had all my pencils that I was going to use picked out, which is another thing to mention. Don't think you've got to use every colour in the box. If you have treated yourself to like the whole story, the mothership, don't try and use every one. You be selective. Pick a few out and they're the few you're going to use, which is exactly what I did. I was a good girl. I did that. And then, um, unfortunately, when I went to use them, I uh, picked up what I thought was a black and it was green. So the little bird had green eyes and things like that. It looked a little bit kind of possessed. So just be careful, have a look because um, you can't really tell on the on the outside of the, um, you know, the the, the, um, the colour on the outside of the pencil every time. They're, they're really dark and it's not until you put the water on them that, oh, you think, yeah, okay, that was not black. It is indeed very green so a little bit of blue not too much on the on his head because I don't want it to be too intense too blue I want to baby I love you little couldn't help it there a little bit of Madonna all right see what I did but I didn't sing it see how I'm behaving if you watch my Facebook lives Facebook lives you'll know that's not always the case I don't always behave but I'm being good because for Lou's sake I hope you like that Lou appreciate that didn't put you through the vocals 
All right, okay, so I'm just using this lighter blue, which is the um, the bluish turquoise. Lovely. I like that when it's quite literal. Bluish. It's bluish. Yeah, a bit bluish. I used a bit yellowish earlier. Bluish now. And what I've done over there, that's going to create a green. All right. So almost ready to um, blend. I need to make sure that I have my... You see, there's the green. I thought I picked up black. No, it's green. Hard to see. See, that's exactly... One thing also, another thing to note is that... Um, notice how nice and sharp my pencils are. If you use your pencils nice and sharp, you will get better control and detail because what you'll find you're doing as well is you're not colouring in with these. You're just laying down a bit of colour sort of where you want it to be, okay? And when you add the water, that's when you um, do the actual um, painting with the pencils. You're not colouring in with the pencils as such. You're still painting with watercolours, but you put in the pigment where you want it sort of. If that makes that make sense to you, Maria? Yes, it does. Good. Well, if it makes sense to Maria, we're on a winner. Because often that we're talking, she'll I'll be like, she didn't, she didn't get me, did she? You know, but that's then just life, isn't it? When you when you live with somebody, it's like, what's she talking about? And plus filters in place. I have to say, you know, when you're with somebody um, like twenty four seven ish, I have to say, the um, hearing filters are quite sound. Sometimes feels like twenty five. Ah, oh, rude. See, you know what I mean? See, I, I, I was like thinking, wow, she's quiet, she hasn't said much. And then, yeah, it's all too soon. Right, so, a little bit of blue there. Right, now, here's where we're going to add some water. And this is going to be the first layer. So don't think you're automatically going to get it all right in this first layer with these birds. Because you don't know until you add a bit of water and see what's going on with it. So, a regular brush and take away most of the liquid from that brush, most of the water from that brush. Now that's quite blue, that little, that is head there, but that's all right because we can come back. There's two things we can do. We can use a bit of paper to blot that up as we go, if we've got it a little bit too intense. Actually, it's not bad. Watercolors dry lighter or as well, so don't, don't worry about that. I'm sure I've used um, green again. Here. See the other wings where it said we had that little bit of blue and then the yellow. So knowing that we get a little bit of that pretty um, green tint there. Look at the intensity of that purplish or bluish kind of whatever it is colour. Bluishy, turquoisey, bluish. Um, so I'm just wetting around those areas that I put the, the darker colour on. Try to be, you know, um, careful. Don't let it run away from you if you can help it. But this is where this little face and the details start popping out. And you get that cute little, it's like a little baby one and the and the, the adult one, the mummy one or daddy one. You know, I don't know. The older, wiser little blue tit is like keeping it right. Giving it a little, you're all right, kid, it's fine. Just, you know, listen up. This is what we're going to do. Go for a little bit of a fly in a minute. I'll show you how that's done. Like you do, you know. Like your driving lessons, isn't it? See, <laughs> kid. Okay, L place on. Yeah. And then can you see how it's just blending in? And don't if you lose some of the white, and you think, oh no, I wanted a bit of highlight on there. Fear not, because you know we have the beauty of the there's a little green bit there's that spot of green there so we put the blue one didn't we and the thing we've got the wonders of the gouache and the white gel pen oh isn't that cute and lovely and let me lift it up so you can see a bit clearer oh isn't that cute so we'll do the holly similar kind of thing so i'm going to pick up a few greens here and just to make it we've got that very dark green hello i'm not going to forget that am i and i'm going to could place some of that where there's going to be less light just like this like that and underneath where the little guy's like going to cast a shadow isn't he on there maybe a little bit here i'm noticed though i am not coloring in in a careful fashion i'm putting the color sort of ish where i want it to be and that's that's really all you can see putting a bit of pigment where i think i'm going to want it play with it and move it around later. So a little bit around there, a little bit here, 
under there is very dark. In fact, it's, it's not actually as dark as it suggests, which is again a reason why you really want to make a colour chart. Don't just pick up your pencils or your paints and think, right, yep, yeah, that's what they are. I know what they are from the either the, the paint on the pencil or the indicator on the tin. Or You, you really can't see the colour like that. Um, and you're going to get caught out for sure. So always make a colour chart. It says I who doesn't have any colour chart in front of me. So it could be quite psychedelic. So carrying on like that. Now you could use watercolours, you could use your um, watercolour markers, you could be using, if you want to just sit and have a bit of tidy colouring in, you can do it with your alcohol pens, you know, sit in front of the telly, chill, have them all stamped out, use the appropriate ink, do your colouring like that, and then, um, you know, it's all good. Right, so a little bit of this, I'm going to do this like sappy kind of green on that one, I think, and these leaves, look a little bit rounder those ones there and I'm using this quite heavy-handed as well and I'm going to use a different green maybe let me see maybe that one to be honest what's probably going to happen is when I blend this out I might even use a little bit of yellow when I blend this out um, you're going to get shades of the green anyway you know it's going to be from darker to lighter so let's just pop a bit of yellow and have that shining through as well Again, as I said, this is the first layer, and if I don't love it, I can always, you know, put more layers on top of that. Um, just looking for a couple of brush options. Maybe use this bigger brush. It's a little bit firmer, this brush. So, right now, once you wet this, this is where it all of a sudden looks more like a painting and less like um, pencil. And I absolutely know I'm going to need to get some white gouache on this because I've lost all my highlights. I've just coloured the whole thing in because I wanted it really strong. I wanted it to be blocky. I didn't want it to be a wishy-washy colour. So I've gone heavy-handed with the pencil. And that's okay because I'll go over it shortly with some um, white, either in the form of the gel pen or the gouache or indeed both because I can so we've got that but yeah I did I did want that that's actually what I'm what I wanted to achieve I'm not worried as I say about losing the, the highlight on the the leaves because that I can put back but I did want strong color because those little birds are really strong in color and if the leaves were wishy-washy and pastel they just wouldn't look right it wouldn't look you know it wouldn't it wouldn't be harmonious in this whole thing so um i'm gonna do the berries and then we'll look at the um the highlights and coming back to add a bit of detail to the leaves so i've got this bright red here i'm gonna pop on there like that and so just coloring around the outsides because i want to if i can leave a highlight on there now the thing is with the berries you know you think right i'm gonna add the water now and blend it you really don't really need to if you don't want to um, see what if you see right you're gonna get more pop of color so hardly any water on your brush literally if you think the brush is dry it's probably not that's enough to blend the berries and give it a little bit of a highlight can you see if you want to add a darker red you can go around the outside with it with a darker red just to give them if you've lost the shape so if you lose the definition and you think oh I need to make them look spherical again give them a bit more pop you can go around with it like this one is a magenta and pop them back in right now i'm mean, i'm going to get a little bit more dramatic with the leaves because um we do need a little bit more shading in here so i'm actually going to use a little bit of this black underneath some of these where they're turned up and where there's a bit of a shadow so more drama so before i make them lighter i'm actually making them a little bit darker as well because it's all about the contrast. If I want to make them look 3D, the way to do that is to turn the contrast up a bit more, make them pop, especially where you've got one leaf kind of, um, you know, overhanging it. And if you're wondering, how do I know that? Look at my stamp, you'll see I've got cross um, hatching, which is lines to suggest shadow, or maybe cross hatching. So I've got hatching underneath this one. I can see, maybe you can't at the minute, there's, hatching here to see what pop a bit of shadow in there she now i don't yeah and 
that's where you're going to put the darker bits so just blend that in now so even though it's the black i didn't use it really really um thick i just put a little bit on in those areas so that knowing that when it goes over the green it wasn't necessarily going to make it black it was just going to tone down the green and give it a shadow if that if that makes sense there still making sense maria absolutely so that's it we're on the winner like i say makes sense to maria we're good that sounds awful doesn't it well if maria can understand it <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, no worries. so we've got the little and what you can do as well is we could add a little shadow underneath that shall we add a shadow underneath that Maria yeah let's do it so we can use this indigo and pop a little bit underneath here in a couple of places and make it look like these leaves are a little bit and don't worry if you're going over that silver yeah embossing powder as long as you don't scrape it off with your pencil just be careful your, your embossing powder will repel any water-based colouring product like your um, inks or whatever you might want to use in the background as well, which we're going to do in a sec as well. So we'll pop a little under there, in there to create a shadow. And in there, and then let's see what we've got. We may regret it, in which case I'll be, ah, oh, Maria, what were you thinking? No, Maria, it's all me, it's great. Told you it would work. <laughs> <laughs> take it back so what you've got now is a little cast shadow which makes those leaves look like they're sitting against something and they're a little bit more 3d little things like that just make all the difference and by pulling the the part of the leaf away and popping it in there this is the thing i love to do in workshops which we'll be doing in the the, the workshops that we've got booked in maria these are the little things that make the the difference between looking pretty good and wow, I think. Right, so next, to finish these little birds off. A um, couple of things, we need the white gel pen, which we have here. And so for straight, straight, first thing, if you've lost your little highlight on your berries, pop a little highlight back on the berries because you want them to look nice and elfy. You can pop a little highlight on the little bird's eye if you've lost that, but don't, don't go over the top because you don't want them to look a bit like, you know, demonish. You still want to look cute, not devil bird, yeah? Okay. And pop a little highlight on his tail. And the thing is with the gel pen, um, you can actually blend it as well because they're water-based. So, ah, come on. Come on. It, it, the thing is as well, you know, it's not the pen's fault. This is a great pen. The card, if it's slightly wet, will um, repel the, the ink from the pen. Any pen, any gel pen. So if you want to just pop a little bit of gel pen on there and then blend it instead of your gouache, that works too. Um, the other thing you can do as well, and I'm still going, it's like, okay, let it go. But, you know, this is what we're here for, show you all these little options. You can pop, if you've lost a little detail in his, little, in his eye, you can pop that back in and give him a little bit more... Um, definition there with the with his eye and his, his little beacon if you've lost that little bit there and you want to darken the little bits around his face to bring it a little bit more detail use your little liner pen a very fine one you don't want a, a, a thick one I'm actually using a 0 0.3 and again on the website you can and this is you don't need to do all this please don't think you need to do all this to make it look good this is me just taking it further and taking it further so that wherever you're at you can play with these and say that's good i'm stopping there for speed i'm stopping there that looks good but if you want to do more you can so last thing to do is we'll create a little bit of color in the background and i think i'm going to use maybe a little bit of tea dye on this because it's a hard call on what color i could have done a frosty blue but i'm thinking to contrast with the blue and the bird i'd use to use a warmer tone in the background so tiny little bit of tea dye around the outside and again you'll find that i don't want to go dark into the center because i want to still have those little birds pop out and stand out but i want to suggest some color in the background and that there is going to give you a nice little warm glow 
and then let me show you the card I have prepared this little guy so I've created a square card the wording from the dice are, is there from the die set gorgeous big lovely word and cuts such a pretty font and it cuts perfectly and it's joined up so you don't have to think oh no i've got to piece it all together i popped a bit of stickles on the or glitter glue on the berries and this paper from the other from the um half old christmas set actually features those two little birds we gave you a little sneaky peek ah <gasps> you didn't even know that was a clue as to what was to come and then I've got this oval frame I've cut with the frames that are in the set and that again size perfectly to work with your little bird. Oh, oh. do you like that? Oh, in it tweet. <laughs> oh. So there's your first little card there. I'm going to have a little pause and then I'm going to show you um, another couple of little quick bits and pieces. Um, so I'm going to pass back to Lou and then we'll do another little quickie.